to complete IRS form 5500 easy for your solo 401k plan. Hey everyone, Adam Bergman here, tax attorney and founder of IRA Financial. Welcome to another episode of Ad Bits. On today's episode, I want to discuss how you can complete IRS form 5500 easy for your solo 401k plan. So going to go in depth on this. I'm going to actually um, show my screen and show the form. So if you're listening to this podcast, you can easily just watch it on YouTube and kind of watch me go through and complete the form line by line, or you can just listen to me, whatever works for you. But before we get into the details of the form, just want to briefly discuss the rules for filing form 5500EZ. First rule is you only have to file it if your solo 401k, not your IRA, not your SEP IRA, not your simple IRA, if your solo 401k has assets with a fair market value in excess more than $250,000 as of 1231, 2021. So if your plan assets are only 150 or 210, you don't need to file it. Now, if it's close to 250, file the form. It's not a tax return, there's no tax due just an information return. So file it. The penalties for failure to file are huge. Tens of thousands of dollars. So no need to worry about penalties. If you're close, if you're at 230, 220, file it. And when you file it, keep filing it. If you're at 250 this year, next year you dip to 220, keep filing it. Why? Because once you stop, and if you don't indicate that this is a final return, you're gonna receive letters from the IRS. Now. Even if technically you're correct that you don't have to file, it's still a royal pain to deal with the communication and corresponding with the IRS. So my suggestion is just keep filing, if, even if you're under the 250. Easy is due July 31. You can file an extension to go to October 15th. Um, you can file by paper. You can file electronically using the Department of Labor, uh, efast.dol.gov. And um, there's a blog that um, I've written that's online that I will include a link somewhere um, on, on the YouTube channel where you can just read through the instructions that I've put together. But if you mail it, you generally mail it to the Department of Treasury, Internal Revenue Service, Ogden, Utah, 84201 slash 0020, 84201 0020. You can send it by FedEx. It would go to the Internal Revenue Service. 1973, Rulon, R-U-L-O-N, White Boulevard, Ogden, Utah, 84404, 84404. Again, these instructions are available uh, if you need them. Um, you basically, if you do it by hand, you can't use felt pens, okay? And can't use arrows and stuff or include schedules or attachments. They just want the damn form. So penalties are huge, so you should definitely file it. And you obviously need to file it if it's um, above 250. So <laughs> let's go through the, um, the form. Um, let me share my screen. If you're watching on YouTube, you can um, check out where uh, I am. Um, and here we are. Okay, so here's the form. And actually, it's easy. This is one form that the IRS got right. It's super easy. So in 2022, you'll file for the 2021 taxable year. So you'll indicate an A. Is this your first year? Is it an amended return? And is this the final year? If you are deciding to close your plan, let's say you close your plan in 2021, you'll have to indicate that this is your final return. Okay? Okay. You're going to check the box if you're filing this under an extension or you filed um, you know, form 55, 58. Um, you're going to then check if it's a foreign plan, uh, late filer penalty relief. Let's say you forgot to file this over the last five years. If the IRS hasn't got to you first, you can automatically enter a penalty relief program and you can then indicate to the IRS that you're doing so, you have to pay generally about 600 bucks. It's a minimal amount of money, much, much, much lower than paying the penalties and fees. And then you can indicate that this is part of a late filer penalty relief program, which indicates that to the IRS. So your name of the plan, let's start part two, 1A. 
name of the plan is pretty easy. It's on your plan documents, your adoption agreement, plan summary, you know, XYZ 401k plan. The three digit plan number is generally 001. That's on your adoption agreement or plan summary. The date the plan became effective, let's say January 1, 2021, whatever that date is, that's on your adoption agreement, plan summary. The employer's name, that is the business that adopted the plan. It's Adam Bergman, if it's a sole proprietorship, or it's XYZ LLC or XYZ Inc., whatever the case may be. Then you're going to put the tax ID number of the entity, not the plan, the tax ID number of the adopt the employer. Then you can add a trade name if applicable. You're gonna put the telephone number and then you're going to put a business code which you can check on the instructions to the 5500EZ which is released by the IRS. And that you can find just some code that relates to what you do whether you're real estate, consulting, law, accounting, whatever it is, you just find a code. Uh, you're gonna put your address in the adopting employer. 3A is the plan administrator's name which generally is the individual, right? That is the solo 401k trustee. So if Adam Bergman set up a XYZ 401k, <coughs> excuse me, for my XYZ business, I will be the trustee and the plan administrator. Generally, it's the same. So you're just going to put same. Okay. If you're the same as the, um, if it's the same as the employer. Okay. Now, if it's not, you're obviously going to enter the information, but most people will just use the employer name as the adopting employer. So if XYZ LLC is the adopting employer, the plan administrator will be XYZ LLC. Now, if Adam Bergman's a sole proprietor and my employer name is Adam Bergman, I'm going to actually have to get a tax ID number if I don't have one. Why? Because 3B requires me to put the administrator's EIN. So I couldn't use my social and have to get a tax ID number. Yes, some sole proprietorships will have tax ID number anyways. But if you don't want have one, you're going to want to get one then you just put your phone number. Okay, so question four, if, if the plan name is changed or in any way, you'll have to indicate that to the IRS in question four. And uh, it's A, B, and C. Then five, five is gonna tell the IRS what's going on with the plan. How many participants are involved? So the total number of participants, is it just you, you and a spouse, you and a partner? You're gonna put that in the beginning of the year. Um, they're gonna show how many in B1 at the end of the year. Um, and it's just sometimes, most of the time, it's like one, 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 or two, 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 generally pretty simple stuff. Part three, financial information. Okay, this is important. 6A1, do not include the contributions you made to the plan in 2021 in 6A1. Include it in 6A2, but not in 6A1. 6A1 is what is the assets worth on January 1, 2021. So clearly the contributions probably weren't made on that day. So you add your asset value. Let's say you had a piece of land for hundred grand, $5,000 of cash. It's $105,000 January 1. So that's the beginning of the year. And then let's say you added $20,000 in contributions and everything stayed the same. Then end of the year, it's 125. Liabilities. Liabilities is if you have a mortgage, a non-recourse loan or any type of loan associated with the investment. Okay. So most people don't have that. If you have Leverage, if you use leverage by real estate, that's where you would include it. Remember, the leverage must be non-recourse. It's a loan you do not personally guarantee. That's based off Internal Revenue Code Section 4975C. So that's where you would include the liabilities. And then you would just net it out. If you have zero liabilities, then obviously you would just use 6A. It would go to 6C. Okay, so that's it. Pretty simple. Part three, contributions. Okay, this is where you're going to tell the IRS what you contributed to the plan. So whatever you made in 2021 contributions, you're going to indicate that. Employer is the profit sharing. The participants is the employee. And then others, you're going to add some rollovers. Okay, so if you rolled over 100K, 7C, if you made employee deferrals of 18,000, 7B, profit sharing of 10, 7A. So this question comes up very often. Adam, employee deferrals I made in 2021, but... My profit sharing contributions I made in 2022 for the 21 taxable year. Correct? Why? Because employer contributions, the only rule is it must be made before the employer files its return. What do you do? So there's no right or wrong answer. What I suggest is be consistent. If in the past you've treated contributions in 2020 for 2019, an employer, and 2021 for 2020, do the same for 2022 to 2021. 
This is your first year making employer contributions in 2022 for the 21 taxable year. Then decide whether you want to treat them as 22 or 21. I think it makes sense to treat the contributions on the form as if you treat them on your tax return. So even though you made the contributions in 22, treat them as being made in 21 and add them to the 5,500 EZ. I just think it makes things much easier. And if you get audited, it's going to match up the form, the EZ form with your tax return. So that's what I suggest. Contributions in 2022 employer, treat them for 2021. Same with employee deferrals. <clears throat> Technically sole proprietors, single member LLCs can make employee deferral contributions when in um, 2022 for the 21 year. So you want to be able to do that. So now we want to go to the codes, right? What code are you doing um, here? Okay, under seven. So part six, um, sorry, part four, question eight, talks about two character codes. And this is based off the 5,500 easy instructions, kind of indicates what the plan is done. So the most common ones, just you know, are two E as in Edward, two J as in Jason, three B as in boy, three D as in David. If you have a brokerage account, you can do two R. Um, and again, you can look on the instructions and you can then determine if anything else applies to you. Um, but generally those are the codes that most people use, 2E, 2J, 3B, 3D. If you have a brokerage account, 2R. Um, again, it's just the more codes you include, you just don't want to miss any. Um, so the more you include that's relevant, um, no harm. Question nine, you have to indicate if you have a loan. So if you've never taken a loan, you put no. If you have a loan, you put yes, and then put the amount as of the end of the year, what's left on that loan, okay? Um, pretty simple. Question 10, you don't need to uh, complete it if you don't have a defined benefit plan, which if you are a client of IRA Financial, our solo case are not DB plans. We work with a company called Pension Investors that do all our DB plans. And question 11 is a DC defined contribution with minimum funding. So that's irrelevant either. So you're just going to hit no for 10 and 11. And that's it. You're done. Finito. Isn't that easy? Yeah, it is. So it's one form, as I mentioned, the IRS got right. It is super, super easy. <clears throat> so you just got to sign it and either mail it, or if you're doing it electronically, obviously you'll uh, electronically file. What are some things for a member that um, I suggest? Um, I would say that if you are a sole proprietor, remember you're going to need to get a tax ID number for your, um, as a plan administrator. Total plan assets. That is the fair market value of the asset. So if you own property, you paid $100,000 and then you borrowed $100,000. So the property is worth 200. That's what you put in. You include the liability. You'll net it out on B, but you want to include the fair market value of the liability, okay? Because that's what it's worth, right? If you have a home worth a million dollars and you only put $200,000 of equity in and borrow 800 and your friend says, Adam, what's your house worth? You don't say it's worth 200,000. You say it's worth a million. That's what it's asking, the fair market value. Remember, 6A1, do not include contributions. 6A2, include contributions. Seven, um, well, question seven, part three. Remember, employer is the profit sharing. Employee, the participant, is the deferrals. Okay, just the codes. If you have questions, you can just Google 5,500 easy instructions, and the codes will be towards the bottom. Remember, 10 and 11 is irrelevant. If you have no loans, click nine, no. <laughs> and that's it. Um, it's pretty simple. Okay. And we're here to help. If you're a client of our financial, call us, email us, chat us. We are here. Don't feel like you're alone on our Island. We will assist you. We've done tens of thousands of these forms. We do them every year. We will assist you. And if you want to just file it yourself and just have a couple questions, no worries. Let us know. We will get you the answers. Promise. We've seen it all. Okay. If you failed to file in the past, don't just never file file it. You may want to talk to us about getting into a voluntary correction program where you could you know pay a fee and correct all your uh, past failures. That is definitely more efficient and tax friendly and penalty friendly than just they're never filing it or waiting to get audited. Um, yes, it's a three-year statute of limitation, but um, it's better to just file this. 
This is an information form. It's not a tax return. There's nothing to get spooked about. Okay, especially you saw how easy the form is. The form is super easy. Um, so we have sets of instructions that if you need assistance with, um, actually, let me just share my screen here because I mentioned um, that there is a business code. Okay, so um, here are the business codes. So it's on the instructions. It's in our instructions that we include. So let's say you are in the, I don't know, mining business, you just put oil and gas, or if you're in the wholesale trade, you can just pick whatever's relevant. No big deal. Okay. Whatever works for you works. Um, just wanted to show kind of what it's worth. These are what our instructions look like. Um, <laughs> pretty um, simple. Uh, we kind of go through everything on the form. So if this podcast is not enough and you kind of want to just stare at the words, um, you can do so. We'll, we'll make this available or you can just call us. Um, we'll also assist you. One last thing I wanted to mention is if you're part of a control group rule, so let's say you own multiple businesses and you're filing one sole K for multiple businesses. One of the codes, there is a specific code for control group on, in question um, eight. So you're going to want to include that. And, and the codes uh, are all available on the IRS website. Let me just find it for you. Um, so this way you can't say you didn't know what, where to find it. So if you just Google IRS form 5500EZ, okay. And you go to the IRS website and you check out the instructions. I'll share my screen and show you. you the instructions are pretty well done too. I think ours are better, um, but um, you, know, you could, so here are the codes. Let me share my screen so you can see what I'm talking about. Share. Okay, so here you see. So here are all the codes, okay? So let's say I said, um, you know, 3B, you have a plan covering self-employed individuals, 3D, <laughs> pre-approved pension plan. Um, let's go to 2E, um, let's say you have a profit sharing plan. Remember I said 2R, if you have brokerage, right? So these are all the codes. You can kind of see what works for you. Uh, here are 3H control group rule. Remember I talked about 3H control group. So all these codes are here. If you have issues or questions with any of the codes, just let us know. But hopefully now that you've listened or watched this podcast, you'll be able to file the 5500 easy. Remember, 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 it's only for solo 401ks. Don't file it if you have an IRA, a SEP IRA, a simple IRA, a Roth IRA, only for solo Ks. If you're part of a company, like you work at IRA Financial or Tesla or Apple, you don't need to file your own. The company files it. It's one form for the company. So even Tesla or Apple, they have 50,000 employees. They follow one 5,500. They don't follow the easy though. They follow a regular 5,500 because there's plant testing rules. There's all kinds of stuff that are not applicable to solo Ks. But one of the main advantages of solo K besides making high contributions, a loan feature, doing and gaining the ability to be your own trustee and getting checkbook control, ability to do Roth contributions is the fact that the 5,500 easy is so easy. It's one page. If you have less than 250, as a 1231. Don't have to file it. And if you do, then no big deal. Your file it takes you no more than six, seven minutes and you're done. Mail it in. And uh, if you have questions, let us know. That's why we have our compliance service. That's why we're here to help. That's our job. So don't be shy. Uh, reach out and we would love to help you. Uh, you can info, email us at info at Financial. Uh, you can ask questions to me. Um, I can then share them on my podcast called um, Add mail where I share and discuss and answer three of the best client questions. And that drops every Thursday on my podcast. So other than that, thank you so much for listening. Again, if you want to watch and kind of see the forms, um, just go to YouTube and you can search for ad bits and you'll find the podcast and uh, you can then watch it and that may make it easier. And if not, then, you know, listening works too. So appreciate you guys spending some time here today. Uh, thanks and have a great day.